Welcome to the White Lotus channel. Thanks for being here. Deck review. Lost on Kato's Boros Synth. I saw him tweet it. Put the list out. He won 5-0 with it. Took, took a look at it. I was like, yeah, he's made some changes for sure. He posted it as the fastest version of Boros Synth. That, that's probably true. But if we, let's just take a look at it. Boros synth traditionally, or I should say currently in the meta, it's a mid-range mid value deck, but he is pushing that to more on the aggressive side of a mid-range deck. Just look at the amount of direct damage that he's included in this deck. 16 points of damage, Galvanic Blast. 12 points of damage, Lightning Bolt. 16 points of damage, improvised club. What is, what's missing? Dawnbringer Cleric is missing for sure. It's in the side. Lembus is missing. We just have the four Icker Wellspring. Everything, it, he is not fucking around on this deck, in my opinion. It is just dealing damage or it's, we'll consider it later. Makeshift Munitions gives you reach. But that's not what this deck is really doing. Like you'll see a lot of mid-range deck have burn spells for for reach, but this is the deck's game plan, in my opinion. It is dealing direct damage to the face as fast as we can. Does it play out as fast as burn does? No. In the matches I've played with it, still plays a little bit like a mid-range value deck. It is faster, but it's it really has an explosive ending at times. It's not too often you're not holding on turn, say, five or six. You have two blast, improvised club, bolt. You just have stacks of burn spells. So it you have that kind of, I don't want to say inevitable, but there are, if you play it, if you play it correctly and you're not using your burn spells for spot removal, which is not how I play the deck, I, I don't like to remove the creatures if necessary. I'm just getting four, maybe six damage in on creatures, and I'm just burning as fast as I can. That's how I play it. Others are different. They'll just, they like to burn the, the opponent's creatures or remove the opponent's creatures and just get in with damage with their own creatures. Everybody has a different play style on it. I like to hold my burn spells as long as I can and just try to finish off the game that way. It varies depending on the deck. But let's take a look at the curve. Everyone's pretty pretty much familiar with it. We won't spend a ton of time on it. A lot heavier on the one drops than the two drops, which is a good thing, in my opinion. Also, take a look at the mana base. He's One of the ways that you can kind of slow Boro Synth down, it's a little bit slow most of the time, the metagame version that people are familiar with, but he's, he's really cut down on the artifacts in the mana base. You have eight. You've got four here and then four Rustvale Bridge. Everything else, basics, or the come into play, non-artifact tap. So I like that component because it's limiting your opponent's sideboard choices when they're bringing it in, them thinking they're going to strip your mana base. They can still hit one, but you're giving them a lot fewer targets. I really like the deck design, though. Kadotha Rebirth's great. That's fodder for Improvised Club, fodder for Makeshift Munitions. You'll notice Clark Clan Shaman missing from the main. This is just this is dealing as much damage as it, as it can, as fast as it can. Again, it's not straight burn, but this is more on the burn. It has a burn deck style feel to it in its structure and its spell choice. Most burn decks run 8 to 12 creatures. The remaining amount is burn. If we count called Call Dotha as one creature per card, you've got 16. So it's it is mid-range, but it's on the more, you know, burns burn side of things. Looking at the sideboard, Dawnbringer Cleric. Everyone knows that's optionality. It's a great card. <clears throat> Enchantments. I don't use it as much as picking something from the graveyard. You can, but it's usually just gain two life or destroy an enchantment for me. Pyroblast against all your blue decks. Cast into the fire. I like to play it against fairies as two. Some people don't. I like it that way. But it's good against affinity. It's good against the Boros in the Boros mirror. And the 1-1 one, one to ping some creatures, so to speak. 
relic for the graveyard decks. Again, not going to spend a lot of time on it. A lot of people know the Boro Synth deck. I don't know if they know about this particular version as well. I would experiment with it if I was you. It's a lot of fun to play. Um, I, I like the that kind of game ending situation that you can have where you can really just unload with burn spells. Sometimes it looks like you might be losing, but you're not. Let's get into some games and take a look at it. Match one, game one, unknown opponent. Opening hand, certainly keepable. Optimally, it, you'd want a Glen Hawk, maybe a Core Skyfisher to bounce a Wellspring or a Thraben. But we've got Burn, a creature, draw, Kadotha Rebirth. Rebirth. It's an absolute keep. Let's go. Turn one island. Could be lots of things. Could be UB Terror. Could be fairies. Don't know. We'll find out. We should find out on our end phase. Plays Lorien. I'm thinking UB Terror at the moment. As the odds on favorite. Not guaranteed. <clears throat> Wrong. And when I'm playing the fairies matchup, especially we know that fairies has a hard time getting a lot of damage in, right? They it just it just takes so long at times for them to get to finish that game. I'm just looking at burn. I'm going to try to pull out as many counter spells and spell setters as I can. That's how I play it. Uh, if I can get rid of these fairies quickly, I use, I try to stop it before they can set up, but that's okay. Just going to run it. We're just looking at the burn function of it, right? That's what we're looking at right now. And we know this is probably spell stuttered. Sure. We've got more hoping to dodge spell pierce. We did. That's good. We're just prioritizing Kadotha right now. You know you're probably going to lose some, some cards against fairies when they counter it. This is kind of what happens. But we just really want to get three in. It stops the moon circuit hacker. And then if we can set up munitions and improvise club, things like that. I'm a little stunned that Thraven got uh, got countered. I'm not sure what the uh, the opponent's plan what that is he's flooding out a little bit which is you know good for us but i'm not sure countering thraben it's not again to disparage the opponent it just kind of caught me off guard and i'm i'm gal blasting here let me pause this for a second he has to know that i know he's got spell sputter spell stutter sprite in hand right so i'm throwing the gal blast out I like to to go for reach, but there's other cards I want to play that to me are more important at the moment. He took it. He can, he countered it. I just I don't understand that that play either. Because if I if I know you have spells that are sprite in hand, I can barely say it. If I know you have spells that are sprite in hand, I'm throwing a gal blast at it with four cards in my hand. What then is coming? Right? I don't know. It's what happened. We'll take it. Munitions typically typically is going to wreck fairies. And that's what I'm prioritizing here. I'm prioritizing that over the Gal Blast on the prior turn. Sure, but spell stutter only works depending on the amount of fairies you have in the play, and you currently have none. So that resolves. He's got two cards in hand. He flooded out a little bit. Burning the uh, improvised club here, take a, a shot at it. He force spikes me, is what it is. We prefer it stuck, but had it, let's say it hits, right? That's 12 points of damage. He'd be three points away from being dead.
he's flooding, and I, and I'll take that. It's essentially over. I know that it's over. This is how we end it. But watch, you got four. You got four off the gal blast. Another eight in hand, plus three. It's eleven. It's just a lot of damage. It comes out of nowhere. Which I like. If I'm him, I'm not playing any more lands like a long time ago. I mean, my play might be different, right? If you've got four cards in hand, I'm not sure exactly what my lines of play are. At some point, you just push it because you have so much burn that I've got more burn than you have counters. But it got it done off burn, not off creature damage. And that's what the deck is good at doing, in my opinion. Let's go to game two. Match one, game two with fairies. On the draw, opening hand. Wouldn't mind having a creature in here, but that's okay. We've got, what, four, eight, eleven. It's half the opponent's damage. In a prior video, we talked about if you're playing a burn deck, just like prioritizing opening hands with 10 points of damage. Even though this plays out like a burn deck, in my opinion, I'd probably lower that down to about eight non-creature. We have that and some. Let's go. We don't have to worry about getting our mana base ripped apart. It's fairies. But even, say it wasn't fairies, we're still leading here with non-artifact lands. And I think Lost on Kato's approach to minimizing the damage that can occur when you're heavier on the artifact mana base is the correct approach. We have two artifacts on the battlefield now. Another one in hand, that's three. So it's not really running into an issue of whether or not you have Metalcraft or not. Opponent's down to two cards. I don't mind that exchange. We're at five there. Well, he's at three now. But I'll take my five against whatever they have. I probably should have experimental synthed first before gal blasting, but that's typically how I do it, how most people do it. Get as much information as you can before you start making decisions. But Spire Golem we just dealt with. Don't like to do it, but would have rather saved it at him. The re I, I double block here thinking that odds are he's got Brine Barrel. So if I double block, if I just block it, I'm going to lose mine. He still keeps his moon, uh, moon Circuit. And then I just went ahead and double block to see if he had Mutagenic or not. But I think that's the exchange. Makes sense to me. We're taking some damage. Still not that concerned. Drawing some cards. Yeah, we'll take this. There you go. I like casting the fire. A, a lot of other, some people, I don't want to say a lot, don't like it. Some have even laughed at it. Don't really understand that. Maybe their IQ is just better than everybody else's. I don't know. But I get value out of it. I like it. One, uh, one card in the opponent's hand. See, I just I don't get that countering some of the cards that he's that he's done. Again, not to disparage, it seems a little reckless. I don't I don't know. Maybe he's not familiar with it or whatever. But there are cards that you have to prioritize that you can't let happen. Wellspring is an enabler. There's times you'll counter it. 
But if you look at what we talked about, closing it out kind of out of nowhere, right? We've got three off Kadatha, three off Lightning Bolt, four off Gal Blast, three off Bolt. It's I like I like the build a lot. It's 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 my favorite version of Boro Synth right now. I don't say that lightly. I'm not saying it's strictly better. It's not how I usually talk. It's just because I like playing Burn as a style very much. It's more in my wheelhouse, so I'm more comfortable with it as far as a strategy is concerned. But I highly recommend checking it out, see how it does. I like it a lot. It's been fun for me, and the results have been good. Thanks for being here. Stay safe and be well.
Thank <laughs> you.